Hello and welcome to another lectureclips.com tutorial. Today we are starting with a completely new topic which is kinematics of relative motion. In this tutorial I mostly want to show you where the formulas come from which we will use in our further calculations. Now this information is not actually necessary in order to do the calculations, it will suffice to simply apply the formulas correctly, but I do believe that especially in kinematics of relative motion it is essential for your understanding to also see where the formulas come from. Alright, in the first kinematics video, in the introduction video to this series, I mentioned, or maybe you saw it by yourself, that sometimes it is easier, especially with rotational motion, if we use a coordinate system which is not fixed but moving along, which is rotating. It simply makes the description easier. And this is what kinematics of relative motion is all about. We will always use a moving, usually rotating coordinate system. This implies though that there has to be a second coordinate system which will not move because otherwise I wouldn't be able to measure the motion of the rotating coordinate system. So it follows that we have two coordinate systems in kinematics of relative motion. One which is an inertial frame of reference and fixed, and then we have a second one like this here, which is rotating. We also call it moving or rotating frame of reference. Now I have a basic vector A in this rotating frame of reference. Now if we depict the vector in the rotating frame of reference, it looks like this. So we have some scalar quantity times EXR, so the x direction of the rotating frame of reference, plus some scalar times EYR and so on for the z direction as well. So this, this vector is depicted in the rotating frame of reference. Okay, what happens if we derive this vector with respect to time? First we have to figure out which frame of reference to use. Now we have two options we can derive this vector with respect to the rotating frame of reference or we can derive it with respect to the inertial frame of reference. If you derive the vector with respect to the rotating frame of reference it looks like this. So the direction stays the same and just the scalar quantities became a dot over it. But what happens if you derive the vector using the inertial frame of reference and here we have to pay attention to the fact that the moving frame of reference is in motion compared to the inertial frame of reference. Okay? And this means that the unit vectors of the rotating frame of reference are moving as well. So if we derive this vector now, we have to consider the product rule. And the derivative with respect to the inertial frame of reference looks like this. The derivative of the vector is on one hand this, plus also this, where this stays constant and we only have the derivative of EXR with respect to the zero system as a frame of reference. Now we know that for a derivative of the unit vector with respect to the inertial frame of reference is nothing else than omega r cross EXR. So, as I said, the derivative of EXR with respect to the inertial frame of reference is nothing else than omega r cross EXR. Omega r, of course, is the angular velocity of the rotating frame of reference. And accordingly, the derivative of EYR would be omega r cross EYR and so on. And now, if we insert this here and simplify the equations a little bit, we get this as a result here. This is the derivative of the vector r with respect to the inertial frame of reference. And you can see that it consists of two parts. On one hand, this is nothing else than the vector derived with respect to the rotating frame of reference plus omega r cross this term here, which is nothing else than the vector a itself. You can see that I simplified this a little bit because originally it would be axr times and then omega r cross exr, but since these are vectors and this is a scalar quantity, I can write it down in that way as well. And now we found the first extremely important formula. This is not just only valid for kinematics of relative motion, but can be used every single time we have a rotating frame of reference and we have a vector depicted in the rotating frame of reference, which we derive with respect to the inertial frame of reference. Yeah? This is nothing else then the vector derived with respect to the rotating frame of reference plus omega r cross the vector itself. We will also use this later on, so this is an essential formula. Alright, now let's have a look what comes next. Alright, now let's have a look at this. 
we have our two coordinate systems. This is the rotating frame of reference and this again is the inertial frame of reference. And here you can see the point P. Now what we want to know is the velocity of point P with respect to the inertial frame of reference. So we want to know the absolute velocity of point P. And we can say that this is nothing else than the derivative of the vector RP. And now we can see that the vector RP consists of two parts of the vector R0R, R, this is the point 0R, so the vector from the region of the inertial frame of reference to the origin point of the rotating frame of reference plus R relative, which is the vector from the origin from the rotating frame of reference to the point P. So we can write down P equals R0R R plus R relative. And now we want to derive this vector with respect to time and with respect to the inertial frame of reference. So it looks like this. Alright, first we have to derive the vector R0R R with respect to the inertial frame of reference. This is nothing else than V0R R because R0R R is already a vector which is depicted in the inertial frame of reference. Okay, And if we derive it with respect to the inertial frame of reference it is simply V0R. R. So basically nothing else than the velocity of the reaching point of the rotating frame of reference, the velocity of the point 0R. But now we also have to derive this vector with respect to time and with respect to the inertial frame of reference. And now we see that the vector R relative is a vector depicted in the rotating frame of reference and we're deriving with respect to the inertial frame of reference. So we have to use the formula from before. So we know that it's nothing else than the derivative of the vector R relative with respect to the rotating frame of reference plus omega r cross the vector itself. Okay, here we have to use the formula from before because this was a vector depicted in the rotating frame of reference and we're deriving with respect to the inertial frame of reference. And this is how we get the very important formula of kinematics of relative motion because we know that the absolute velocity of p is v0r plus omega r cross r relative plus the derivative of the vector with respect to the rotating frame of reference. This term here we call velocity of transportation motion and this we call the relative velocity. And now we can do the same when deriving this again in order to find the acceleration of the point P. Alright, then for the absolute acceleration we have to derive the absolute velocity with respect to the inertial frame of reference. So the absolute velocity was velocity of transportation motion plus relative velocity. So we have to derive the velocity of transportation motion with respect to the inertial frame of reference and we have to derive the relative velocity also with respect to the inertial frame of reference. Now let's look at each separately because the terms will be a little longer. First we have to derive the velocity of transportation motion with respect to time. Now the velocity of transportation motion was v0r plus omega r cross r relative. So v0r derived with respect to the inertial frame of reference stays a0r because this is a vector in the zero system. And the derivative of omega r cross r relative with respect to the inertial frame of reference is omega dot cross r relative plus omega r cross this here, again with respect to the inertial frame of reference. So as a result it is this equation here. And here we have to use the formula from before again because R relative is a vector depicted in the rotating frame of reference and we're deriving with respect to the inertial frame of reference. So it is the derivative with respect to the rotating frame of reference plus omega r cross the vector itself. And this is how we get this result in the end. So we know that the derivative of the velocity of transportation motion consists of two parts. This one here which is called the acceleration of transportation motion plus omega r cross the relative velocity v relative. And now we also have to derive the relative velocity with respect to the inertial frame of reference. Again we have to use the formula from before because v relative again is a vector depicted in rotating frame of reference we are deriving with respect to the inertial one. So this is v relative derived with respect to the rotating frame of reference plus omega r cross the vector itself. 
Now this part is called the relative acceleration and then once again we're left with this term such as here omega r cross re relative. So at the end we can sum up everything and we can say that the absolute acceleration consists of a t, this should be a t actually, this is the acceleration of transportation motion plus a relative plus twice this term here from here and from here. 2 times omega r cross v relative, the, the relative velocity. So at the end a p equals a t plus a rail plus a c. This here we call Coriolis acceleration, okay? 2 times omega r cross the relative velocity is a c, the Coriolis acceleration. And this is how those formulas come to be. At the end I want to give you a summary of the formulas we have established. These are the formulas you should know. As I've said before, for the calculations it is enough to just know the formulas and be able to apply them correctly. Uh, so we know that the absolute uh, velocity of p is velocity of transportation motion plus relative velocity with these two quantities here and we know that the absolute acceleration is the acceleration of transportation motion, this is uh, t again, a t, plus the relative acceleration plus the Coriolis acceler acceler acceleration with uh, these three quantities here. That's it for this time, see you in the next clip.